Welcome to the Unseminary Podcast. Are you looking for practical ministry help to drive your ministry further, faster? Have a sinking feeling that your ministry training didn't prepare you for the real world? Hey, you're not alone. Join thousands of others in pursuit of stuff that we wish they had taught in seminary. Buckle up and let's get started with this week's Unseminary Podcast. All right. Well, welcome. Happy Thursday, everybody. We just want to start off with that. Thanks so much for listening in to the Unseminary Podcast. My name's Rich, the host around these parts. Today, we've got a fascinating interview. I've been looking forward to this. What if I was to tell you that there's a group of people, actually 67,000 people in this community who don't have, or up until this guest, who don't have a kind of active uh, presence of Christ there, a kind of a church, something reaching out to them. What would, what if I was to tell you that that's in America, in this country? Uh, today's guest is Stephen Barr. I'm going to let you tell us what community that is. But Stephen, welcome to, uh, to the show today. Thanks, Rich. It's a pleasure to be here. Nice. So Stephen runs a ministry called Cast Member Church, which uh, reaches out specifically to the cast members at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. Uh, the largest single site employer, just heard this today, the largest single site employer uh, in the entire country. So Stephen, I, I look forward to hearing more about this. Why, what's the idea behind Cast Member Church? Well, cast members, which is uh, Walt Disney's term for an employee, mm -hmm. anyone who works for the Disney company is a cast member. So, uh, because his attitude is was that they have a role to play. It's a show, and no matter what your job is, you have a role to make the show happen. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, um, you see where Disney draws the most mm -hmm. talented. Um, we call them dreamers and doers. And this is a place where not just Walt Disney World, but Disneyland and the parks around the world, but these are magnets mm. for creative people. Mm -hmm. These are, these, and they're like talent incubators. These, these young people come out of college. They, they come to work to Dis for Disney to develop their skills and, uh, and not, just, not just entertainment, but business and things like that. But right. it's an incubator. Absolutely. It's a magnet. And so we felt what a great opportunity to be able to bring Christ into that formation process as mm -hmm. they're developing their, their talents and abilities. If Jesus can become a part of that process as well, imagine the potential they have when they move on beyond, uh, beyond Disney. Very cool. I know at our church we have, um, there's like a cadre of, there would be 20-somethings, early 30-somethings who have been through the, uh, the college program at Disney World. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's true. There is like a there's a unique quality of those individuals when you kind of take them as a whole. Um, they're mm -hmm. like talented, creative um, people that are making a difference in all kinds of different industries now. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, I think it's such a unique idea what you know what you're doing here. So let's take a step back. Give us a bit of the history. How did you get started? Um, you know why do this? What it's such an interesting you know uh, ministry. That's a great question. Um, I've always loved Disney. I mean, uh, most people who have ever been to the parks, I mean, th that first time they remember going to Disney, it, it's a magical uh, experience. But for me, that, that experience stayed with me all the way growing up. And uh, in 1991, I believe it was, uh, I was a cast member for a while. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking around and going, wow, it's a shame there isn't a church mm -hmm. to minister because all of these these cast members have crazy schedules. I mean, right. you cannot put something together that would be normal or, or predictable. And I, but I remember thinking, wow, wouldn't it be cool if there was a church just for cast members? And I forgot about that. I mean, right. I really did. It was one of those things where, you know, and, and you know, many, many years later, and uh, it, it came back to, I don't want to say haunt me, but it certainly came back <laughs> to get me. <laughs> Very cool. Well, you know, has anybody tried this before? Is this and 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 when you say church, like what is this? Is this like do you do services, you know, uh, at the you know the foot of Cinderella's castle on Sunday mornings? <laughs> like, how, what is, how are you doing, cast member church? Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> uh, well, no, uh, we are a church in the we like to call it in the biblical sense. Um, when we when I started cast member church. There was, um, I came to Orlando, and the first thing I did was try to connect with other pastors. Mm -hmm. And I started hearing the horror stories of churches that had tried and failed oh, to, right. Yeah, right. to reach Disney. It's a very, um, I mean, it's show business. Right. So it's like putting a church in, in you know, Hollywood. Right. Um, and it's, it's um, so they, the churches have tried and failed. Mm -hmm. And so I started asking myself, well, why? Mm -hmm. Why have they failed? Because I know God would want something here. Right. And so... Um, I just really start, and I and I have to admit that I came with this model in my mind of how it was going to work and how awesome <laughs> it was going to be, 
And I believe it was about two weeks into it where God took that plan and said, nah, nope, nope, I'm not going to do that one. Oh, <laughs> and yeah, I, definitely. And I, I had a, a almost, a, it was not a crisis, but I mean, I really had a moment mm. of truth where I really oh. had to ask the Lord, what do you want to do? Not yeah. what, do, what are my plans? What do you want to do? I'm hearing all these stories about right. churches trying and failing. And so I, here's, a, here's a novel thought. I went back to scripture. <laughs> I decided, how did it work? How did right. it work? And I, the book of Acts became my best friend for weeks. And I just kept looking at this, this dynamic church. And somewhere in that wrestling, um, I heard a quote by uh, somebody I'm very fond of, Mike Breen. Mm-hmm. And he made this comment about, if you plant churches, you might get disciples. But if you make disciples, you mm. always get the church. Mm. And I thought, well, that's so it. True. That's it. We've, we've been doing it backwards. Mm-hmm. So instead of planting a church at Disney, let's just focus on making disciples. Hmm. And if we make disciples, God will take care of the church. Very and that's, cool. exactly what, that's exactly what's happened. Very cool. Now, that's, that's I think, a great idea, you know, a great, a great thought, right? How mm-hmm. instead of looking at, I'm assuming, you know, some of the ways that other churches failed, I'm assuming they were trying to import maybe other models, things that they had been doing in the past. Mm-hmm. And that just doesn't work. And I hadn't really even thought of this until we were going to interview that it, it's going 24 hours a day. Disney World yeah. is, you know, is there's constant activity there 365 days a year. And so the idea of appointment based, we're going to run a service or run some sort of deal that maybe you know that doesn't that maybe not work for you so what does the ministry actually look like how are you you know reaching out to cast members well the first thing i did is i started gathering a group of people that kind of like uh, my first group of disciples yes. you know the, the people that i'm going to invest in mm-hmm. and then these people in turn will lead their own groups mm-hmm. and we become a network that has we call them the group's communities, nice. and D stands for Disney until you know they don't like that. We'll call it D for discipleship. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but anyway, we have these groups that meet all over the Disney property hmm. um, at different days, at different times, and a cast member can choose a group that works for their schedule. Right. If we try to do one service, we'll draw maybe 100 people, mm-hmm. and that's it, because it's, it's just crazy. But if we put the emphasis on the discipling groups, not only do they have their own family, but this is a place where a, a, an unbeliever can actually sit in a, a group mm. of people and say, I don't get that, or, you know, I'm not sure I believe that. And that's okay, because it's a family. Right. And so they're drawn to, they're drawn to the family element, mm-hmm. but in, within that family element, discipling begins to take place. And so we have this network that me- that meets at different times and different days. Very cool. One of the things I love, I, you know, I will make sure, I want everybody who's listening to check out your website, which is castmemberchurch.com, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the things I love about what you're doing that I want church leaders to lean into, don't write this off, is I think you've done an incredible job contextualizing your ministry. Um, even just, you know, you just kind of throw it out there, communities. It's a small thing, right? It's like, it's it's nodding to, you know, the culture you're in. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just think that's powerful. What a, you know, powerful idea. And and it's throughout your, you know, just from what I see online, it's throughout everything you do. You're trying to find how do we connect with, um, you know, with these groups or with the people who are actually there. Now, what kind of, what kind of, for lack of a better word, curriculum or, you know, how, what are you actually talking about in those groups? I, you know, there's probably a better word than that, but what's that actually look like? It's, we start every group, when every time we launch a new group, we start with something called life beyond imagination. Hmm. It's, a, it's a curriculum, I think that's probably the best word. Yeah. Uh, it's a curriculum that I developed uh, for cast members. Very it cool. is, um, what it does is we found out that when you talk to cast members about Jesus, well, let me back up. If I tell them I'm a pastor, th- th- they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. The, the conversation shuts down, and the idea of talking about Jesus and, and even trying to get a conversation going mm. is extremely difficult, right. and, and at least in our culture. Mm-hmm. And so, but in my conversations with cast members, I mean hundreds of cast members, I realized that none of them are afraid to talk about purpose. Mm. And I Very thought, cool. okay, that is, that's huge because mm. purpose is the core of who we are. We exist because God has given each one of us a purpose, a reason to glorify Him. So I thought, what if I worked through a scriptural model on how to help a person find their purpose? And in that process, we introduce Christ. We introduce this idea of you have a purpose, 
but you're separated from the one who gave you that purpose. Hmm. And so uh, we called it Life Beyond Imagination, which hence the Disney kind yes. of vocabulary. Yeah. But we also use dis what we call Disney speak, another mm -hmm. word for vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And we use words like story, dream, quest, mark, mm -hmm. and these, these words that float around Disney all the time. Mm -hmm. But the idea is every week they're working through this process of why am I here? Right. Uh, who am I? What, where am I going? And why, what does all of this matter? Mm -hmm. And what's wonderful about it is we've had an amazing conversion rate as a result mm -hmm. of this wow. process. Very cool. It, it was, um, it's kind of surprised all of us, but it's, <laughs> it's, it, it's been very successful. And then once we have it, we've, at the same time, we've created a common vocabulary, a common set of values. And mm -hmm. uh, the idea is every person that goes through this has, they're able to tell their own story. Mm -hmm. They're able to share whether they've come to Christ yet or not, they know how to tell their story. And Very that's cool. so crucial, so crucial here at Disney. Well, I wonder if you could tell us, you know, give us a, maybe an insight into an individual who's kind of, when you think like, oh, this is the kind of person that your ministry is, is reaching, you know, uh, give us a sense of their profile and, and kind of how has it impacted uh, them? It's great. We, uh, we use the term dreamer and doer. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea is it's someone who goes, I know I have something to offer. Right. I just don't know what it is or mm -hmm. how, how to do it. Um, these are, these are uh, usually artistic people. And mm -hmm. I don't mean artistic like painters or mm -hmm. singers. These are just creative. Yeah, creative folks. People. Um, they are uh, usually just out of college, mm -hmm. uh, so Disney employs all ages. Mm -hmm. uh, but we seem to draw those that want to make a difference in the world. And so we've, we're able to say, hey, you know what? We know that God wants you to make a difference too. Mm -hmm. And so that seems to be the connection right there. We have a lot of, um, we have entertainers, we have people that work in merchandise, we have people that work in food and beverage. Mm -hmm. There's really not one particular slice of the population except to say that we are reaching at the younger element of Disney. Right, very cool. Now, what would you say to a church leader who, they're, they're listening in today and they're thinking, okay, that's interesting, I'm not in Orlando. Um, but, you know, there's maybe a, they, they look at this and say that there's a college campus close by to us or, um, you know, maybe another large employer like what, you know, like Disney or another kind of identifiable kind of subculture that does feel outside of them, but they'd like to reach into them. What are some of those kind of lessons or, or a few things that you like that they should be thinking about if they want to try to reach into that community? Well, I would say, first of all, ask the question, who do you love? Mm. I mean, who, who is it that you love, that so you good. connect with? People seem to connect with you. I'm a dreamer and doer. Yes. And so Disney just happens to be the place where those people come. But right. you put me in any city, I'm going to be drawn to those people who, who are, are uh, catalysts and, mm. and uh, innovators. So the question would be is who do I connect with? Who has God created me to connect with? So you have to know who you are. Right. And then, then you start thinking about well where do those people gather? Where do they and you're going to find out that there's a mission field out there that's designed just for you. <laughs> Very cool. Well, this is fascinating. Now, do you actually get a chance to be in the park? Is that a part of what you do? Have you figured out have you figured out the ultimate job? Oh no, I, I'm ministering today. I, I got to go ride Space Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's yeah, it, the truth is yes, I do. I get to uh I'm in the park so much. Nice. Um it's never gotten old. I don't I'm not there riding the rides all the yes. time. Although if my kids come with me, um chances are we're going to end up on something. Yes. But uh <laughs> but you know, it's it's fun. I love I have the coolest mission field in the world because where else can you go where people are paid to talk to you? Mm, right. And right. so 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 I I go in as a guest. I I don't have any special I, I don't receive any special treatment from Disney. We're not endorsed by Disney or anything. But I go in with an annual pass. Mm -hmm. And so I'm treated as a guest. Mm -hmm. And so I look for cast members that are, you know, you can just tell, I'd love to talk to somebody. Right, and so right. I'll go and just start a conversation with them. And uh -huh. um, it's been fun taking friends of mine into Disney as well and showing them what I do. Right. And they they start to see the mission field as well. So I, I'm there. Cool. I'm there a lot. Uh, I try to balance not just the parks, but the hotels. Right. Most of our most of our communities meet in hotels. Okay. Uh, so we don't meet in homes. We meet mm -hmm. in we meet out, actually on Disney. Property. Hmm. And um, so yeah, I'm I, I and I live about uh, three minutes from Cinderella's Castle. So oh, gosh. <laughs> um, my kids, if they can't hear this thing, this will be very bad. They'll be like, Dad, you've got the wrong ministry. Why are you not in you know, Florida? I will, so. tell, I will tell you this, though. I think my kids are the only ones you'll ever hear 
seriously, Dad, do we have to go to Disney today? <laughs> I can imagine that. I can imagine that. Well, it's funny because we're, you know, we're similar. We're like, you know, 45 minutes from um, Manhattan, right? New York City. And it's the same thing, right? Like, I love going into Manhattan uh, when guests come, but my wife and kids are like, no, nah, it's fine. You take them. Um, we're staying here. I don't really want to see Times Square one more time, you know, so I, I can uh, identify with that. Well, this is fantastic. Anything else you'd love to share uh, with our listeners before we jump into the lightning round? Yeah, just simply the fact that, yeah, I mean, Disney sounds incredible. It sounds like a, you know, it, it makes sense what we're doing. But the truth is, it took a lot of hard work to figure out how to make this work. And I want to encourage anyone that if you're really feeling called into church planting or something similar to what we're doing, don't be afraid to do the hard work because it's worth it. God wants to do a new work through you. Don't, don't necessarily look at models. You can learn from models. But don't be afraid to step into something innovative because I really believe that's how God grows the church. This is the Unseminary Podcast. Stuff you wish they taught in seminary. All right. Well, we're going to jump into the lightning round, that part of the show where we <laughs> jump through similar questions uh, okay. with people who are on every uh, episode. Today, we're super excited to have Stephen Barr with us. He's from Cast Member Church, a, a really super unique ministry uh, reaching out to uh, cast members at Walt Disney World in, in Florida. And actually, you're thinking about expanding or you're in the process of expanding yes. to other locations. Tell us about that. Our vision is to have a cast member church at every Disney location around the world. Wow. Uh, so that means Anaheim, Tokyo, Paris, Hong Kong, and Shanghai. Right. And so um, we are now getting ready. This month, this is exciting. I'm flying out to L.A. Uh, to have the first meeting wow. uh, with leadership, uh, with forming a leadership team for <laughs> Disneyland Anaheim. Very cool. Wow, that's that's neat. That's a, what a cool vision. And again, you'll have a really tough job the day you have to fly to all those parks one after another. <laughs> we'll pray for you, Stephen. We'll be like, Thank oh, it's, that's a tough ministry, you know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, obviously. Thanks. All right. Well, what's, uh, what's on one online resource that you're using these days that, that's really helping you? Uh, for us, it's we're using something called Fuse. It's similar to Skype, what, we, what we're doing right here, um, but it allows us to have multiple people at the same time on the screen. We can actually have communities that meet virtually. Okay, they don't cool. even have, cast members don't even have to leave their home. Mm -hmm. So they're able to connect. I can look at seven or eight people at the same time, have a conversation, and, it's, and we're going to use the same thing for Anaheim. It's going to allow the church to connect virtually. Mm -hmm. And even though I know there are people out there that are critical of, you know, is it really a church when you're meeting virtually? Yes, it yes, is. We have, exactly. we, have, we have people that I have never met face to face, mm -hmm. and yet I've wept with them and, and celebrated with them things. There is something that God is doing in an incredible way through this technology that we've been given. So Very Fuse cool. is something that we value greatly. Very cool. What's a book you've read in the last, I don't know, six months to a year that's kind of shaping your thinking or, you know, your, your, your ministry? Yeah, it's a book that I keep rereading, to be honest with you. <laughs> right. it's, I, it's, I can't say that I read it in the last six months. I keep reading it over and over. Um, it's Building a Discipling Culture by uh, Mike Breen. Um, right. It's what, between that book, that's what confirmed for us, hey, I, I think we're heading in the right direction mm -hmm. by understanding, by building a discipling culture. Also, real quickly, um, Church Unique by Will Mancini uh, had absolutely. a powerful impact uh, on um, on our being here at Disney. But right. Mike, Green, Mike Green's done a great job with building a discipling culture. Yeah, Will Mancini's been on the podcast. He's a great guy. I uh, value him big time. He's a great leader for sure. He's one of, he's one of the reasons we're actually here. I mean, oh, we did cool. that, we did the whole vision process with him. Yep. And, and I was in San Antonio at the time mm -hmm. and ended up here because of him. <laughs> oh, wow. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, are there any other ministries you're looking around to and saying like, hey, that kind of inspires you or, you know, you're got you, has you thinking in a new way? Is there anybody doing anything like what you're doing? Uh, I'm sure there is. I mean, <laughs> right. but, I, but the funny thing for me is, and Rich, this is come more, comes more from a personal thing. Yes. When I start looking at other ministries, um, I'm either tempted to duplicate mm. or start to feel guilty because I can't do what <laughs> right. they're doing. And so what I've done is I've, I've really looked to our cast members for inspiration mm, and cool. what is God doing there and how can we build on that. Um, you know, there are, I, I, I go online, I look at what other people are doing, but my greatest inspiration, to be honest with you, comes from watching what he's doing right here. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Just two more questions. Um, so if you could get 15 minutes with any leader alive today, uh, you know, who would you want to get that time with and why? 
That's that's not a fair question. Because <laughs> you got to narrow it down, one or two. There are so many people. I've been blessed to be able to spend time with some of my heroes, but mm. uh, I think Seth Godin is mm. somebody who understands culture. Oh, so true. And and I think it's and he's not just a marketing guy, but mm. he understands the psychology of people. And so I would love to pick his brain. Another one is a guy named Sir Ken Robinson, and he is a. He's a, a leader in education, but he he's understands how people learn, and that fascinates me because it, it really helps the church. If we understand how people learn, we can help them, obviously, embrace the principles of Christ and all. And, um, you know, Dave Gibbons. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave is just one of those guys that uh, he's out there on the edge, and um, I've heard him speak, but I'd love to, for 15 minutes, be able to say, you know, what makes you tick? Right, right. Pick his brain a little <laughs> bit. Cool. Yep. All right, when you're not doing the hard work of ministering to people inside Disney World and, uh, you know, what do you do for fun? How do you kind of kick back? I'm obviously kidding. I'm, I'm ribbing you too much on that. I understand. That's I'm not okay. trying to diminish your ministry. No, no, um, no. What, what, what do you do for fun? How do you just kind of kick back, enjoy some, some downtime? A couple things. One, I love music. Um, I, uh, I was in, the, in fact, when I was a cast member, I was a musician. Oh, so, okay, nice. uh, and I spent 20 years as a worship pastor. So I love, I love just to play. I love to write. Mm. Um, but to be honest with you, I, I love going to Disney. I mean, right. I love being at Disney in that environment and, um, uh, I don't take it for granted. And yes, mm. it is fun. I mean, mm. I, it, it really is. But um, I, I go back to the fact that I love my mission field and I right. love hanging out there. So Very cool. Well, Stephen, I really appreciate you being on the show today. Appreciate you taking time out um, from your schedule uh, to be with us. If people want... That's easy. Uh, Stephen with a V at castmemberchurch.com. I'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. That's what, that's what we do. <laughs> My pleasure, Rich. Thank you. I want to get in touch with you or with Cast Member Church. How can they do that? Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, because I know even just practically, I know there's a, a lot of... Um, you know, students in the college program come down and there may be church leaders that are like, hey, they've heard that there's some kid in, you know, they're, they're organized in their church that's coming your way. I'm, I don't know if you'd be open to, you know, kind of bridging some of those contacts and, you know, helping people as they arrive into Orlando. That might be kind of a nice uh, connection for people listening in. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks, Stephen, for being on the show today. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Don't be shy. We'd love to connect. Check out Unseminary Inbox. You can sign up at unseminary.com and we'll send you helpful training resources every week. Plus, you'll gain immediate access to our exclusive members area with tons of resources you can use. Connect with Rich on Twitter at Rich Birch or through email rich at unseminary.com don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode at unseminary.com it includes links to what we talked about today and more leave a comment we'd love to hear from you did you enjoy today's episode drop by itunes and leave a review thanks again for tuning in to this week's unseminary podcast join us next week when we'll learn more stuff we wish they taught in seminary <laughs>